In the previous video, we talked about two main neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine. Even though very important, they are not the only chemicals that define how we feel or act. Now we will focus on other hormones and neurotransmitters. If you haven't seen our part 1 of this series, we highly recommend you to do it now as it will make it easier to follow and understand things we will talk about next. Also hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss last chapter in this mini-series and any of our future videos. That will also help us in our mission of revealing less known science behind common things and help wild science reach people faster. The general function of norepinephrine, also called noradrenaline, is to mobilize the brain and body for action. Noradrenaline release is lowest during sleep, rises during wakefulness and reaches much higher levels during situations of stress or danger in the so-called fight-or-flight response. In the brain, noradrenaline increases alertness, promotes vigilance, enhances formation and retrieval of memory and focuses attention. It also increases restlessness and anxiety. In the rest of the body, noradrenaline increases heart rate and blood pressure. Low levels of this neurotransmitter cause low energy and depression. High levels result in high blood pressure, intense headache and anxiety. GABA is a less known neurotransmitter that has somewhat of an opposite function of noradrenaline. Its main function is to reduce activity of the body and brain, in other words, to calm us. GABA levels increase in the evening, causing us to relax and preparing our body for sleep. Anxiolytics, medications used to treat anxiety and panic disorders, as well as insomnia, influence GABA receptors, hence their calming effect. Oxytocin. This is one of the most mysterious hormones produced in the hypothalamus, because it's so hard to measure its effects. Studies have linked oxytocin to numerous social behaviors, like building bonds between mother and child, building social and romantic relationships, affecting trust and friendliness towards others. It is also noticed that oxytocin works well in preventing pain during childbirth, decrease fear and anxiety, and can also alleviate symptoms of depression. Endorphins. The name of this hormone says a lot. It is contracted from endogenous morphine. They indeed have similar effects like drug morphine. Their main function is to reduce pain, but they also cause feelings of pleasure and euphoria, like dopamine. In fact, endorphins in central nervous system work by blocking GABA, which in return increases the production and release of dopamine. Endorphins are responsible for producing the euphoric state in cases such as runner's high, sex and orgasm, listening to music and eating an appetizing food such as chocolate. Melatonin or sleep hormone Melatonin is a hormone that regulates the sleep-wake cycle. It is primarily released by the pineal gland after being synthesized from serotonin. When the outside light is decreased, nerves from eyes send signals to the brain that the time for sleeping is approaching and melatonin production begins. On the other hand, a lack of melatonin can link to insomnia and troubles falling asleep, and that's why some people use melatonin supplements to help them fall asleep. Cortisol and adrenaline stress hormones. They are released in the adrenaline gland after receiving signals from the brain, and their main function is to activate and prepare body for stressful situations, initiating fight or flight response by increasing blood flow to muscles, output of the heart, rising blood sugar level, and in the same time decreasing appetite, immune system and all other systems that are viewed as not crucial for a short-term preservation of the body. Prolonged high levels of these hormones can cause many health problems. This is the main reason why chronic stress is so damaging. Human body is simply not built to constantly be in, a, in a activated and high energy conditions. Testosterone and estrogen, sex hormones can also greatly influence mood and behavior, not just sexual behaviors. We will not go into details about them, but it's important to emphasize their importance. They can influence appetite, motivation and of course pleasure. Testosterone is also linked to aggressive and competitive behaviors. Low levels of estrogen and testosterone are associated with depression in both sexes. Ok, now let's sum up all this information. Before and during sleep, melatonin is produced, hence his name sleep hormone. 
Noradrenaline is responsible for powering up and activating our nervous system. It sends signals also to adrenaline and cortisol, which give our body signals to start working. Then we have serotonin and dopamine, which are responsible for our motivation and mood during the day. If our serotonin levels are low, we become anxious and our body produces more cortisol and adrenaline. When we are calm, our serotonin levels are high, our stress hormones are low and we feel happy and lazy. Dopamine gives our body motivation in other way, by giving us a promise of reward in an intense feeling of pleasure. It motivates us to do our regular activities like eating, socializing, making love or exercising. That's why most of the drugs that create euphoric feelings target our dopamine system. Endorphins, oxytocin and sex hormones are also linked to our mood and behavior. They work by enhancing levels of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, although some of them can also act directly as neurotransmitters. With the coming of the night, our GABA and melatonin levels increase, calming us and preparing our body for the new sleep cycle. Now you know some basic information about neurochemistry. Next week we will talk about the implication that these findings can have on our existence and how you can use this information to improve quality of your daily life. Stay tuned and see you next week.